Good evening, Americans, and welcome to The Ed Show, live from New York. From New York to Fargo, let's get to work. You just can't come to church and pray on Sunday. When you are hot for Jesus Christ. And go out and pray on people the rest of the week. This legislation is praying. P-R-E-Y-I-N-G. God created Adam, placed him in the garden to work it. And American exceptionalism is grounded on the Judeo-Christian ethic, which is really based upon the Ten Commandments. That it was Moses. He's 15. Ten. Ten Commandments. I just talked with Moses, and he's not in support of this legislation. There is dignity in work. You know what? It used to be the people's house. Not anymore. To introduce the blessing of work. Yes, Lord. It's the house of the 1%. Jesus, who had some concern about the rich people they were trying to get into heaven. The reforms made by this bill will put people on the path to self-sufficiency and independence. And he told them to go to hell. Oh, if you are a Republican, it's going to be just a fabulous moment in church on Sunday, isn't it? Dear Lord, thank you. I'm a Republican. Thank you for giving me the strength to take away from the poor and deny the sick. Just give me Jesus. Give me a break. Who are these people? You know, it, it's, it's, it's Friday. It's almost cocktail hour, and these people have got me worn out already. The Republican Party loves to play the religious card any way they possibly can. I think it's a guilt thing, actually. They love to align themselves with the Bible, and they always quote it, as you saw in the open. But this couldn't be further from the truth. In the last 24 hours, we have seen the true identity of these faith-based Christians. We have seen the true identity of just how faith-based they are across the board. They have taken away from the poor, and they have denied the sick. That's who they are. If Jesus were around today, he certainly wouldn't be a Republican. I don't think I'll burn in hell for that. I think I'm right. It's not blasphemy. All right, last night. Republicans voted to cut food stamps as we were getting off the air by $40 billion. Now, let's talk about the money for just a moment. The president met with business roundtable leaders earlier this week, and he talked about all the positive things that were taking place in the economy. But one thing he said that got no mention in any of the conservative mainstream media was that he has reduced the deficit in half. That's right. The deficit is coming down. We're not overspending on anything. We're not investing in infrastructure. We're not rebuilding a damn thing. Now that the stimulus package is gone, we're just sitting here with no Republican help in an economy that is just slowly moving along 41 months of private sector job growth. What's the point in all of this? The point is, is that we are losing our moral compass as Americans. We're not overspending, but we're going to take away from the most vulnerable in society, and we're going to deny. You know, the last couple of days on on my radio show, I have gotten calls from people who work in doctor's offices that are saying, no, Ed, this is going to be fantastic for the consumer. you got to get out there and tell them more. We're not doing a good job of selling Obamacare. I got a call today from a lady. Uh, She works in an attorney's office. Her her husband is the attorney. She says, it's gut-wrenching to have these people come in and talk about What are they going to do now that they're bankrupt and they live on fixed incomes and now their food stamps are gone? They voted to take food away from 3.8 million poor Americans. Shockingly, one Republican justified taking food away from poor people by using the Bible. My motivation has only been to introduce the blessing of work to abled-bodied people. You know, Madam Speaker, from your chair, you look down the center aisle and you can see one of 23 faces that are at the top of this room. The face you're looking at is the face of Moses. It was his work, the work of Moses, that in the very first chapter of Genesis, God created Adam, placed him in the garden to work it. Work is not a penalty. 
Work is a blessing. What we have done in this country is wrong. We have, we have, we have failed in introducing the blessing of work to able-bodied people. So much for the separation of church and state. We got a whole lot of gods sitting there on the house floor, and they're taken away from the poor. Twisted, twisted, and more twisted thinking. Uh, now, thankfully, New York Congressman Charlie Rangel was there to set the record straight. And I heard one of the Republicans say that what Moses uh, would want, and he was talking about some picture, and I just came up to say that I just talked with Moses, and he's not in support of this legislation. As a matter of fact, he referred me to other biblical things about how do we treat the lesser of our brothers and sisters. Yes, and taking food away from poor Americans is horrible, but you know what? It gets worse. Today, House Republicans passed a bill funding the government, but not Obamacare. Uh, the bill won't make it past the Senate. President, ain't no way. He's no way he's ever going to sign this. This is, this is psycho talk on the part of the Republicans. But what they are doing is effectively trying to shut down the government. It might happen. Today, Republicans voted to stop 30 million people from getting life-saving health care. They voted against people with pre-existing conditions. They voted against young people getting under 26 years old, getting on their parents' health care plan. They voted against free preventive care. And again, Republicans are using the Bible to justify taking health care away from 30 million Americans. Let's repeal this failure before it literally kills women, kills children, kills senior citizens. Let's not do that. Let's love people. As people of faith, I'm a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. And I believe that as part of my duty as a believer in Christ and what he has done for me, that we should do for the least of those who are in our midst. That's my personal belief and my personal conviction. And that's how she votes, right? Wrong. As a Christian, Michelle Bachman should be ashamed of herself. The party who loves to play the religious card certainly isn't living up to the teachings of the Bible. Nancy Pelosi explained this on Thursday as she was fighting against the food stamp cuts. A couple weeks ago, I was in Houston, Texas, visiting my grandchildren, and we were at Mass. In the sermon, the priest said something that I think we should consider as we consider our vote here today. He said, you just can't come to church and pray on Sunday and go out and pray on people the rest of the week. This legislation is praying, P-R-E-Y-I-N-G, on people, on children, on veterans, on seniors. Did Nancy Pelosi say that when she was in church, she was at mass? You mean Democrats actually go to church too? I had no idea. Over the last 24 hours, Republicans voted to take food away from 4 million poor Americans. They also voted to prevent 30 million Americans from getting health care. All from the heart, isn't it? And this guy couldn't be happier. Speaker John Boehner. Don't you just feel the love, Johnny? Uh, he's so happy about denying 30 million Americans life-saving health care, he could hardly hold back the tears of joy. <laughs> We had a victory today uh, for the American people. And frankly, we also had a vi victory for common sense. Victory for common sense. Well, I have a suggestion, and I'm going to do this this weekend. Ask your guider of faith, your pastor, your rabbi, talk about this in church with your friends. If you do that on the weekend, if you do that on Sunday, uh, just open up the discussion. What do you think of what's happening in America that we are a country that's supposed to have a moral compass and we're supposed to be faith based, but we have no problem taking food stamps away from the most vulnerable and denying health care from the sickest of us? I is that a good discussion to have with your pastor for clarification? Get justification for what is happening? 
I think that'd be a heck of a conversation, and I think you might be surprised. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's question. Are you sick of Republicans wrapping themselves up in religion? Text A for yes, text B for no to 67622. You can always go to our blog at ed.msnbc.com. We'll bring you the results later on in the show. For more, let me bring in liberal commentator John Fugelsang and also the Reverend Barry Lynn of Americans United for the Separation of Church and State. Gentlemen, great to have you with us tonight. John, to you. John, you first. What, what do you think about Republicans using the Bible to justify food stamp cuts? Well, Ed, uh, I spent the day at a soup kitchen here in Hartford, Connecticut, where I'm shooting a film filled with lots of people, men and women of all different races and backgrounds who would love to be working right now and paying taxes and contributing to society. But where are the jobs? And we hear this refrain all the time from the Republicans. They want to equate poor with lazy. That is the crown jewel in their anti-Christ kingdom. They want you to think people are poor because they're lazy. And they have two arguments they use loosely from the Bible, Ed. Number one, they'll say, the Bible says, uh, if you don't work, you don't eat. Benghazi. And, and that's misinterpreting what's in uh, <laughs> Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. It's not God or Jesus who said that. It was Paul in the past tense about guys who weren't working because they thought the end of the world was coming. And the biggest argument you'll hear from your right-wing Christian friends, I actually call them Chino because they're Christians in name only. You know, like some Chinos are brown, some are white, most are beige, many are wrinkled, they're highly irregular. But the argument you'll hear is, Jesus said, yeah, uh, uh, help the poor, but he never said the government should pick my pocket to do it, right? You hear that all the time. What they never say is that Jesus didn't have democracy. We do. So if you believe in a government based on Christian values, then you go to Matthew chapter 25 and you want a government that helps the poor, helps the sick, and is kind to those in prison. If you don't want that, that's fine, but stop saying you want a government based on Christian values because you do not. Yeah. Reverend, is there any religious case to be made for taking health care away from millions of Americans to deny them and to put them in a vulnerable position? There is no case that I have ever heard of out of any religious tradition or out of the humanist tradition that suggests that that is the right kind of vote. It is always a disaster when the Congress starts to have Bible quoting contests on the floor of the House of the Senate. That's not the way we do business. It's not the way we make policy in America. What we do is look at the commonly shared values of Americans. Some of those values are right in the Constitution. And we have a history, a history where we've always cared about other people. Yeah. And as John said, you know, one of the th things that I always argue with conservatives about, they say, well, I went to church and they said, help the poor, so I should help the poor. But then when they become the people's representative in the House of Representatives, all of a sudden, something changes. They vote against the poor. And they say this because, frankly, they hate the government. It has not, they lose sight of the goal, which is not to have people starving on the streets of America. And instead, they just hate the government so much that they won't let it do what and, it needs to do. And, and Reverend, in referencing the, Senate, the congressman from Florida, Mr. Sutherland, who got up yep. on the floor, he used his faith as a battle cry to justify a vote of denial and takeaway. I mean, how scurrilous is this? No, it's, it's absolutely astonishing that people continue to do this. You're right. Every time I've been on this show for years, there's been a reference to something that one party is doing, usually the Republican Party, to cloak itself, not just in the flag. It's been doing that even longer, but now in religion. And they've been doing that in earnest since the, in the 1970s. We are not supposed to be making policy based on scriptural traditions. We are not supposed to have these Bible quotes that win or lose the debate. And frankly, uh, this debate on these grounds has led to some awful outcomes. I don't know if people remember this, but Meals on Wheels, which we unfortunately oh, yeah. already cut back during the sequester, that started in church basements. Mm -hmm. The reason the government got involved is because people were so hungry in so many places that it swamped the capacity of the church itself to do the work. That's when government said, you know, it's not a bad idea to provide a hot lunch to people who can't get out of their house. But that's already been cut. Yeah. Food stamps cut yesterday, and the health care essential to be able to live long enough mm -hmm. to eat cut today. John Fugel saying it was George McGovern who got together with 
uh, I believe it was Mr. Dole from Kansas, longtime serving senator. They came up with the concept of the food stamp. It was uh, uh, the food stamp program. It was bipartisan. Uh, George McGovern was moved by seeing uh, poor people not being able uh, to go to school on a full stomach to have a chance to learn. That's where it all and it helped out Indeed. rural America. Isn't, well, isn't, isn't this an attack on farmers? Isn't this an attack on rural America and the, str the economic structure in many senses of food security in this country? You're right, and not just that, it's every bit as stupid and counterproductive to our Republican friends as Governor Romney making the 47% comment last year. Because yes. a lot of those folks are in your base. You know, and, and you know, these are the same guys saying, well, this is America where you can climb the economic ladder. Well, struggling folks can't climb the ladder if you just took out the first 20 rungs. And that's why they're not patriots. They're not Christian. And they're not even really capitalists. And the worst part about it, Ed, and I had guys say this to me in a, in a, in a homeless shelter earlier today was people know it's all a, a big load of bunk. They yeah. know that this is never going to pass. And it's pure theater, although unlike actual theater, the theater creates jobs, not like Republicans. But the fact is, the worst part about it is that the Republicans in the House are assuming that the very Republicans yeah, that they're, they're doing the people's for work. votes are as mean as them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're assuming they're doing the people's work by doing this. John Fiegel saying, Reverend Barry Lynn, great to have you on The Ed Show. Thanks so much.